What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I'm out here in Marrakesh and I'm going to be doing a Q&A on Ramadan and fasted training. It's something which I've been asked on a very regular basis so here we are. I'm going to answer all the questions which you have. I'm also going to be joined with the guys from Leonine Training. They're not actually with me right now but I did do a Q&A with them when I was back in London. I thought it was only fair to get them involved and get their answers because they are actually doing Ramadan. Okay, I'm not. I've only done it once as in one day. Okay, so that's really not enough for me to you know, give you uh, my full advice and experience and share it with you. So, start off with the first question. Would I bulk or would I cut? Realistically, I would cut. For me, you know, I need to be consuming over 3,000 calories. It's gonna be very hard to do that when I'm only allowed to eat in a very short feeding window. So there's no way I'm gonna put size on it, particularly if I'm going such a long period of time without drinking any water and not eating any food. So I would really try to maintain as much as possible or try and go through some sort of a cut. For me, personally, I like to go with uh, cutting as well. But I like to just like let the people know that if, if you really want to like lose weight in Ramadan, it is a good time to do it. In terms of like um, being able to gain or lose body fat, it all comes down to your diet. Yeah. So if you're someone that has an appetite, you could still easily, you know, gain weight in Ramadan. I would realistically probably train an hour or two hours after breaking the fast. So let's say for example here in Marrakesh, sun sets at around 7.30, so I would get some you know, fluids into me, eat some food, and then I would train probably an hour to two hours afterwards. And I'd probably completely change my whole sleeping pattern. So I'd probably be awake for the majority of the night. And then as soon as, you know, the fast begins, I'd probably sleep from, you know, four in the morning, basically up until around midday. We usually train after we've broken our fast, just, just because we like to go heavy. We feel a lot more safer when we've got more nutrients in our body, more energy in our body. Um, like there, I was feeling my body's cramping up and stuff. So if I was to go really heavy there, and I'm, and I'm gonna get cramped so I'm doing legs or something, I could be in a sticky situation. Yeah. Me being me, I'm very stubborn. I'd try and carry on training the same sort of pace and intensity and frequency as I would do usually, but I'm pretty sure that I would struggle to do that, okay? I think, Realistically, I'd probably pull it down. I would do fewer sessions than usual. So instead of trying to go to the gym like five days a week, six days a week, I'd probably pull it back to around four. So that month of Ramadan would probably be an, a time where I'm going through you know, an extended deload phase. So that would be the most sort of relaxed month in terms of my training intensity and frequency. Me personally, I try to do the exact same thing as I normally would, but this is not something I would advise everyone to do. I'd say if you're a bit experienced, you, should, you could do that. The reason being why I do that is because if you're in a faster state and you're pushing yourself to what you normally do, then imagine when you start getting food in you, you yeah, might be able to surpass. Yeah. So that's I always say like, like this is a month of, you know, whatever you can do in this month, when you haven't got food in your system, you should definitely be able to do it outside this month. So even for those guys that are not training at all and they want to get involved in training, but they're like, oh, it's Ramadan, try and do something in this month because it will definitely install a good habit for you afterwards because your mind will just be like, if I can do that when I'm fasting and less food in me, I can definitely do that after. Yeah, teach you discipline. This is like 100%, man, for yeah. sure. If I was going to break the fast, I would have obviously some water in my system as quickly as possible and some protein as well. So I'd probably have about two scoops of protein. It's going to be digested very quickly and it's going to kickstart protein synthesis. Then I'd probably have some quick releasing carbohydrates, so some fruit, some dates, so that's a very popular one. But I don't want the meal to be too big because if I'm going to be training an hour or two hours after breaking the fast, I don't want to eat something which is going to put me into a food coma. Yeah, and just to add to what he was saying, when you're in a faster state for a prolonged period of time, your stomach actually shrinks. So it's actually not a good idea to suddenly have a big meal in. So as Atlas just said, you want to, when you open up your fast, I would say it's very uh, advisable to have like a medium sized meal, nothing big, and again, simple carbs, and then train. And then imagine after you train, you're gonna have that appetite again. And then when you come back from your session, then you can have a good sized meal. So for someone like me who needs to maintain around 3000 calories, it is gonna to be tough, you know, especially, you know, for those guys that eat, even have to consume more than that. So what I'd do is, I would have calorie dense meals. I've done videos on this before, showing you examples of different meals which are around 1000 calories. What I would probably do, I'd probably guess that the breaking the fast meal would be around 750, but after I've trained, that would be one of the biggest meals of the day, probably around 1,500 calories, and then I'd have another meal before the fast begins. I can imagine it'd be tough for the guys that have a cream metabolism, they're trying to get like 4,000 calories in 
within that yeah, feeding window. For sure, you feel bloated. I remember I experienced that when I was when I used to compete. I was trying to get like 3,000 calories in in that window, and I was really struggling. But now, for some reason, I'm a fat boy. I can just eat a lot. <laughs> Back then. I was struggling. Yeah. So you're in a situation where you're at the dinner table with your whole family and friends and you have an unlimited amount of food in front of you. How do you discipline yourself to not go overboard and say no to the things which aren't going to be good for you? Because I can imagine when you're that hungry, so, you want to eat everything. Me personally, is like, I feel like if you're good all week, you can treat yourself on the weekend. So that's what kind of my motivation behind it is like, say if you eat well and you stick to what you're supposed to eat throughout, throughout the weekend and on weekends, you can most definitely enjoy your food. And on top of that, for me personally, is like that makes me enjoy that cheat meal a lot more. It tastes so much better compared to when if I'm just having it all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, what keeps me motivated is progression. Mm -hmm. yeah. That tiny bit of progression each and, week. Can and for the, for the males um, that go to the mosque to break their fast, uh, maybe get a healthy meal so that you're away from your like you're not breaking fast with your family with all their meals and all the different things on the table. You go and eat your healthy meal, you go and pray at the mosque, um, and then when you come back, then because you've had your healthy stuff, then you, may, you won't have as much unhealthy food. So yeah, your appetite, will, yeah, your appetite will, go. will go down, so then you can you know, eat their food without hurting your sister or your mother's yeah. feelings. You know? <laughs> do, you, do you know what else it is over here? For, for example, Mike, you know about obviously tracking your macros and how it works, right? So for example, say if you're, your mum's food, you can't fully track it, but you could track it, say 70% of it. Because yeah. also you don't know how much oil she's put in and some of the seasonings. But for example, say if my mum made some of like the dishes that we like, for example, her rice. At the end of the day, if I was to weigh 300 grams of cooked rice, I can give, it will have that, um, it won't be 100%, but at least I'm 70 to 80% accurate. Mm. So for the people that actually have experience in knowing how to track their macros, they could weigh their, the, the food that their yeah. parents make. And they, the cooked weight. The way. cooked weight, they can yeah. still weigh it and then they'll be okay. Fair enough, they might be off about maybe 20%, but at least it's not going to do so much damage to them over the month. So. It might look a bit weird, but it's just one of those things you've got to do. I've done it before. Just on the day with the table. Corner corner and my mom and dad are like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, well, oh, mom, you know, these games don't come easy. <laughs> I think this is one of the toughest things. If you have a nine to five job, I do feel for you. I think in, in that case, I would really pull back on my training volume. I wouldn't be able to keep up my usual rate of training you know, frequency or maybe even intensity. I'd probably train on a Saturday and a Sunday for sure when I've got the days off. And then I'd probably just train another two days during the week. So four sessions, that would be enough to keep me going. But with the lack of sleep, which I would have from the nine to five, and then obviously, not really being able to train when I want to train, I am going to feel fatigued and it is going to be very difficult. So you really just have to, to again, listen to your body and just do what is realistic. And the, and, and the way that I was saying to you to lead it up to the month for Ramadan is obviously a lot of people, they may fast a few days. Um, I was in Africa, so we was having like one meal a day. So coming here to fast has been really easy for me because my stomach has already shrunk before the month. So. You know, as a prep, you're saying. As a prep, kind yeah. Of. So try and like. You didn't do that, though, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people saw my snaps. Was, I, had to, we need more. I, I had to actually say, I was like, these are not. These meals are not in the Ramadan plan. <laughs> One thing which I wouldn't recommend is. This is what I wouldn't do, I would not train at the very end of the fast. So, you know, out here it's about 40 degrees, okay? And some, I've seen some people in the gym at 6 p.m. before they break their fast training. So they're not eating anything all day, they're not drank anything all day, and then they go to the gym and doing a very, or trying to do a very intense workout, and I really don't know how they do it. You know, I did a session with the boys at Leonine Training, and out of respect, I didn't drink any water because I didn't want to drink water in front of them, and this was at 5 p.m. And I'm used to drinking a lot of water. I have about a litre of water when I train. And even for me, even though I'd been hydrated all morning and early afternoon, I was struggling without water. So I can only imagine what those guys were going through. So massive respect for those guys. Um, you know, and for everyone who is obviously doing this, it's, it's tough and it's not easy. So hopefully that's answered a few of your questions. If you've got any more questions, just leave a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Um, and yeah, mashallah to all you guys out there. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Leonine's channel. Give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys soon.